Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is Earth that just experienced a lot of collisions with various asteroids. As you can probably tell from the title, today we're talking about an asteroid, or more likely a bolide, an explosion in the skies that very likely came from a completely different star system somewhere out there. In other words, an interstellar asteroid. And in this video, you're going to find out how we discovered it and most importantly, why we think that it's most likely interstellar and not from our own solar system. Welcome to What The Math. And let's begin by just taking a brief look at where this is all coming from. This is from the very famous Harvard scientist, um, Abraham Loeb, who um, was the one to propose that Oumuamua may have been an interstellar sail and not an asteroid as we imagined it originally. This scientist has a lot of really interesting papers, but this recent paper is kind of similar, but at the same time, I would say even more interesting. And this paper by uh, Amir Siraj and Abraham Loeb talks about a discovery of um, a relatively small, approximately maybe 2 feet or 50 centimeters in diameter rock that um, exploded in the upper atmosphere of Earth, but very likely came from somewhere out there, another star in, a, in our own galaxy, or maybe even another galaxy. Now, it's not really certain where it came from and what its origins are, because it's still not 100% certain, but what is certain is that it had parameters um, very similar to those of another interstellar object, Oumuamua, that we are almost positive, like 99.9% .9 positive, came from interstellar space and is now returning back to interstellar space. In other words, this is not from the solar system. But just like we discovered Oumuamua a little bit too late as it was leaving the um, solar system, this particular explosion, this particular um, meteor, collided with the atmosphere of our planet um, back in 2014. So this is something that happened approximately five years ago from when I'm making this video. So how is it that we've only found out about it now? Well, data that we've collected over the years. NASA is great at collecting data and it has this really amazing repository known as SNELS, Center for Near Earth Object Studies. And here you can discover everything about nearby asteroids, any potentially dangerous asteroids, or maybe even discover a collision that may occur somewhere in the future that we don't really know about yet because a lot of this data is automatically generated based on the observations. What is really interesting here is that, um, well, first of all, it's very accurate, it's also very up to date, but you can discover things here that go years and years and years back. I believe it kind of begins at around 1900s and apparently it will go on up to about 2200s. And so in 2014, a rock that was only about 45 centimeters in diameter or just about foot and a half um, was approaching Earth really fast from such a direction and with such a speed that it indicated that it came from the outside. Now these uh, two researchers discovered three objects that could potentially have come from the outside but they realized that the first one, the fastest moving one, may have actually been coming from the solar system. It was probably orbiting the sun. One of them they couldn't really figure out, but the second fastest object was this uh, rock right here that then collided with the atmosphere of our planet and uh, generated a relatively large explosion and a boom. Now here we're actually just going to collide this with the planet and create a much larger explosion. So this is maybe not the best simulation. But it does look pretty, so why not, right? And anyway, this event that occurred back in 2014, January 8 of 2014 specifically, can only be explained if this meteor came from outside of our solar system. It was just moving from such a direction and its velocity was so high that um, it cannot possibly have come from our own solar system. And this has quite a lot of implications. Because first of all, if it came from another star system, that suggests that it may have contained materials that would be totally different or at least somewhat different from the materials inside our own solar system. At the same time, it could have been really old, older than our own solar system and maybe even as old as the universe itself. And lastly, 
it sort of uh, makes you wonder, so if this came from the outside of the solar system, how likely is the idea of panspermia? In other words, how likely is life to travel across the galaxy, across the universe, on these meteors and meteorites, and then transfer life from one object to another across the star systems? If the scientists in this paper are correct and assuming that this came from the outside of the uh, solar system, this actually makes panspermia a lot more likely than we previously thought. And based on where the impact occurred and also the direction from which the uh, meteor came, we think that it may have actually come from the middle of the galaxy, somewhere around the center of the Milky Way itself. Now that's of course going to be a lot more difficult to estimate and finding the origin of this particular rock is going to be close to impossible right now, but because we now believe this may happen a lot more often than we think, we now believe that these interstellar objects may collide with Earth every 10 years or so, so it's quite likely that many of these rocks hit planet Earth over the uh, existence of the planet. And on top of that, there's maybe millions of these objects floating around in our own solar system left for us to detect. So it seems that um, sharing these interstellar objects is a very common thing across uh, the galaxy, and we're most likely going to find a lot more of them in the next few years. But another really cool thing about this particular discovery is that it now allows us to study the stars out there, other planetary systems in the galaxy, not by going there, but by observing the effects that these meteors have on our own uh, atmosphere, and by looking at the spectroscopy of these objects as they collide with the atmosphere. In other words, by looking at various colors, we can then determine what components were inside the meteor, and thus study stars and planets outside of the solar system without really going anywhere. As these meteors burn up in the upper atmosphere, they'll create enough visual markers for us to then analyze them and find out what's on the inside. So this study could potentially revolutionize how we study other star systems and maybe even finally allow us to figure out if panspermia is a thing and if stars share life between them. But until we figure this out, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper in the description below, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.